Hello, welcome. In this video, we're talking about dollar cost averaging. And the goal is to understand why this is advantageous and how it can really help. The basic idea is that instead of buying some number of shares of stock, you spend a set amount of money. And this usually works based on with people's income, right? You have a set income, perhaps, or you know about what your income is, let's say, per month or per quarter, like every fourth of a year. So you can predict how much you can spend on stock. It, you wouldn't predict how many shares you're going to buy. You can only predict how much you're going to spend. And this technique kind of examines and utilizes that feature. So let's assume instead of buying X number of shares every quarter, right, every three months, 12 months divided by four is three months, you can spend $100 on a certain kind of shock, stock, not shock. And you can do this four times a year. And so instead of saying to yourself, I'm going to buy X number of next number of shares, you're just going to buy $100 of a certain kind of stock. Now, what will happen with the stock? Well, the stock price is going to fluctuate. And I'm going to say it starts at, let's say, $10, and then it dips down to $1, and then $4, and then finally back to $10. So if you looked at the cost of stock that you per share that you're paying, or number of shares, we'll start with that, number of shares you're able to buy, you would take the $100 and divide it by the cost of, of the stock price per share. Right, so number of shares. So $100 divided by 10, that means you, you were able to buy 10 shares. The next quarter, you are able to buy 100. The next quarter, you are able to buy 25. And finally, you are able to buy 10 at the end. So, wow, there's a lot of fluctuation here. So in total, you're able to buy 100, 10, 20, 30, 45 shares. And if we look at the, um, the total that you spent on stock per share, it'd be 10, 20, $25, right? So we, we got 145 shares, add up all the prices and we paid $25 and you spent a total of $400. And that gives you a sense of what's going on here, right? Okay, so, so what? So the average share price. Share price. That's going to be this $25 here. We add up all that we spent on the stocks per share and divide it by four. And that's going to give us $6.25. Okay, then we look at the average cost per share. Average cost per share. Well, we take the $400 that we spent, we spent $400, and we were able to buy 145 shares. It's quite a lot of shares. So if we look at that, we can divide that out. 400 divided by one hundred. What was that? One hundred and forty-five. Two dollars and seventy-six cents per share. So, two dollars and seventy-six cents per share. And um, at at the end here, we can say to ourselves, "What is our what's called our ending value? Ending value." So. We look at here at the end the number of shares, right, times the last share share value essentially. So if you sold all 145 shares at its current value, it's kind of give you a, a sense of where you'd be at. You would be at one thousand four hundred and fifty dollars, right, which is great because you only spent four hundred dollars to begin with. And now you have enough shares to sell it for this much. That's quite a profit. And you can also say, well, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you just spend all $400 at once? Well, if you had spent all $400 at once and you happened to land in a quarter where the stock was $10 per share, you would only own 40 shares. And 40 shares times $10 a share is $400. You'd break even. But using this method, you're buying each quarter. You take advantage of these cheaper months and thus make more on average. And so that kind of takes a cushion to the highs and lows of the stock market. Of course, you could try and time it so you only invest when it's low, right? 
But this is based on the amount of money you have available at a certain time. And that's why this method exists. All right, thanks.